What's up everybody, it's Parker here at Fastlane Performance. Today I want to talk about our customer support. With our shop, you get a three year warranty that's included with your build. That warranty covers the install. It doesn't cover the parts because even though we use quality name brand parts, parts are still part of a machine and machines break. Also, there's things a customer can do to break a perfectly operating part. But as far as the installation, the tuning, you get up to three years support with almost every package we offer. We do that because we actually care. It's not so much about the money here at Fastlane, it's more so about we all have a passion for what we do and we want it right. So with that said, majority of our packages have a three-year warranty. I say majority because we have full race car packages that don't carry an extensive warranty just because there's so much work involved, so many parts involved, and the cars are ran so competitively, it's a little bit different story. So honor a warranty with that, but not a three-year warranty. So with that said, I want to talk about a special case. We came this Hellcat a few months ago, returned to the customer. When it was in our shop, it passed all of our tests. The car rented, drive, drove great, made great horsepower. Had no issues with it. Once we returned to the customer, he drove it around for a few weeks, a few months or so. And then he ended up calling the shop saying that his car's not running right. And being more specific, the customer says something along the lines of, you humiliated me. I have the slowest Hellcat in the country. My car runs like utter, lots of bad negative words. And throughout that process, before we can even arrange to get the car here, he started going on rants on Facebook, talking about how bad our facility is and the crappy work that we do. So I wanna talk a few things about that. With this car and going back to how you should handle a built car, once we got the car shipped to us, we paid about $1,000 to have the car shipped to us, which is more than we should have because the customer lives in a rural area and no truck wanted to pick up the vehicle. So we actually raised the price to around $1,000 to get the car shipped to us. Once the car is shipped here, we have a video of the car starting up, running off the trailer. The car sounded great. So at that point, I got an alarm because I actually didn't expect the car to run. So the car running great, great. We hopped in the car, we drove the vehicle. The customer said he had two major issues. One, the car in general ran completely horrible, and two, around 120 miles an hour, the car would actually shut off and lose all power until he came to a stop. So driving the car around the city, it drove great. Driving the highway, it drove great. We actually went up to over 120 miles an hour three times with a vehicle with no issues at all. Put the car on the dyno, examine everything underneath it before running it on the dyno. And then we put on the dyno, ran the car. We actually made more horsepower this time than when the car was at our shop last time. Reason why is it's a little bit cooler outside, the car's not heat soaked, and the E85 is a little bit better quality than what we had last time. So after making great power with the car, not finding a single issue, we called the customer saying, hey, I need to know what's really going on with the vehicle. The only thing I can think of is it's something to do with like heat soak. We were talking to the customer for quite some time. He ended up eventually telling us that he lets the car idle for 30 minutes to up to two hours before racing the vehicle at the track in the staging lanes. What I do at the racetrack, mm -hmm. my car sits and idles basically continuously for a couple hours, the car's just idling until I get on the line. Then I do a small burnout, mm -hmm. not a big one, but just a small burnout, and then I run at the quarter right back around the track and sits back in line and the cars keep it up so I don't shut it down. Right. So it just sits there and idles and the temperatures get way up. So what if? So immediately at that point we go, whoa, you really can't let a car idle for 30 minutes to two hours before running it hard. There's no different than an Olympic sprinter jogging in place for 30 minutes to two hours before doing a full blown sprint down the field or the track. So with that said, we looked further into it. We were able to look at some logs a customer previously sent us, and we noticed that the IATs, the intake air temperatures, were getting up to 220, 230, almost 240 degrees. That's very, very hot. And before we even started one of his runs, the IATs were around 190, 200 degrees, which is, in my opinion, overheated while the car's idling. So with that said, with Hellcats, they have a feature. It's a fail-safe mode. When the supercharger gets so hot, it will literally shut the car down and make no power to keep you from essentially melting the supercharger, melting the motor, because you're forcing hot air into a motor. And with that said, the car actually did everything it was supposed to. It cut down on power, and it kept him from blowing up his motor. Um, so I relay that to the customer saying, hey, man, that's what's going on. Before I could even 
say that the customer immediately says, I've been racing for 40 plus years, that's not the case. My buddy has another Hellcat variant and he does the same thing I do. Just because your buddies are doing something or you see it on the internet doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. So with a shop that does your work, you have to trust a shop because a shop has a lot of experience and stuff like this, especially at our facility at Fastlane. We do a ton of Hemis, a ton of supercharged vehicles. We have the experience to do so. So with that said, you should really trust a shop when they give you information and you should value what they say over them what a friend does. Because that's the problem with this Hellcat. All of our work is perfect. It's a driver error. So with that said, there's a few points that we want to give across to our potential customers and our current customers, or even guys that are doing business with other shops. If you have a problem with the vehicle, you have to let the shop know. And when you let the shop know, you cannot dramatize the issue. If you dramatize the issue, it's going to waste everybody's time. This issue could have been a simple phone call. Hey man, instead of letting it idle for 30 minutes to two hours, let's try letting the car sit with the engine off and then move the car to the staging lanes when you're ready. Don't let it idle and he would have had great success with the vehicle. So that's very important not to dramatize the situation. Secondly, if the shop is offering to bring the vehicle back, you really should heavily consider it and do that because most shops, especially us, want the car right. So you have to get the car back to us and we have to do it all over again even if it is an issue on us a lot of shops are willing to do that because their reputation is what matters and we don't want people talking bad about us because it defeats the purpose of being in this business so those are major points i want to cover we're actually going to host a few track days with that said what did we learn from this we're going to actually host a couple of track days a year to our customers and people that are potentially interested in work where we can actually show them how to race the car, what to do, what not to do. Some of our fastest customers, for example, Nard has a Camaro out there that's very successful, uh, which I love Nard, Nard don't take it personally, but he's not the best driver and he'll be the first to tell you that. So his first few passes on the track were actually not successful. The car didn't look fast, he didn't look fast, he teamed up with a driver and now that car is consistently running great times and winning a lot of races. So with that said, I would say maybe about 60 to 70 percent of racing a vehicle is a driver, the 20 to 30 percent is a vehicle. The customer says he was humiliated because he lost to a Mustang. Well, I want to hit on that. He could have lost to a Mustang that was making 500 horsepower. Yeah, this is making more power, but if this car, if the light turns green and he's waiting for a second, no matter what he does, he's going to have a hard time catching that Mustang. If he waits for a second and he doesn't hook, which no matter what you do to Hellcats, they're hard to get traction then the race is over before it even actually started. So, and also Mustang's about a thousand pounds, if not more lighter than a Hellcat. So you can't judge your vehicle off of other vehicles until you get to the point where you're consistent with the vehicle and you know how the vehicle operates. So that's all I have to say. If we have any customers after watching this video, we have any customers out there that are upset with their vehicles and there's something going on, you need to call the shop or schedule time to come in in person and talk with us because we don't want anyone out there without a vehicle that's running 110%. And you would be surprised the efforts we go through to get the vehicle perfectly. We've got to ship the car here. We've got to take the engine out and go through it. Whatever we have to do, let us know. That's part of our warranty to some degree, depending on the situation. It is a case per case situation. Uh, for example, if you don't change your oil and you're low on oil or you miss a gear, things like that, of course, no shop's going to warranty that. But you're actually considered a returning customer with us and we'll work with you heavily on pricing. But that's all I got to say. We'll throw some clips in here of the vehicle. Um, this go around and running it and some more data. Um, but thanks, guys, for tuning in. We'll see you next time.